Monday show, and we're just jumping off Monday morning with uh, a live stream interview with a very accomplished author. I'd like to welcome the program, Jazz Hammonds. Jazz, thanks for stopping by, and we're going to talk about your debut, your debut novel, We Deserve Monuments. And it's been very, very successful, Jazz. Thanks for stopping by. And and also talk about your upcoming YA novel, Thirsty. How are you, Jazz? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, it must have been amazing, right? To have such great success on your first, in your debut novel. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it was really overwhelming. It's been over a year since We Deserve Monuments came out. Um, and so I'm just excited and a little anxious about how the follow-up um, will be perceived, even though they're very different books. But either way, I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. And what do you think that when you wanted to become a writer, did you think that this can be, was it this quickly or were you working hard to get to that that debut novel? Oh, that the debut novel was six years in the making. So it was very um, long, arduous process. A lot of times where I was like, I'm giving up on this. And um, but yeah, writing just wouldn't let me go. I've always loved writing. I've always loved books. And so I just kept getting drawn back to it. You know, this this uh, YA novel is such a, an important one at this time period, in my opinion, what's happening uh, with teens in general and mm -hmm. the, the struggle mental health wise and addiction. Uh, perfect timing. What made you kind of go from this one, you know, that was uh, We Deserve Monuments to this YA type novel? What made you ex kind of transfer over to some other topic area? Yeah, um, I always think of We Deserve Monuments as a book that I wrote when I was really mad at the world. And Thirsty is a novel um, that I wrote when I was mad at myself because I was going through my own personal um, struggles with addiction and my relationship with alcohol. And so I wrote it when I was just in a really vulnerable tender place so like and I I was just writing it for me essentially um, and then as I started unfolding this story and uncovering more about it I realized that this you know could potentially be really relatable to a lot of people and a lot especially teenagers um, like I just think that I had my first drink when I was 15 and so it, it's not too young to talk about these topics no it's it's not and we all pretty much have had that experimentation as a teenager in alcohol and hope God forbid if it was drug abuse, you know, uh, I mean, alcohol is very rampant, especially in the teenage years. And then uh, we talk about drug use and vaping and just all these different things as, as a teen. And it's a lot of it has to do with, with just basically taking ch chances mm -hmm. as teens, I guess our brains are not, you know, formed in the specific point to do that, you know, yeah. to, to make the right decisions. But ultimately, if you look at a lot of teens today, what they, that ha had to go through COVID, mm -hmm. that's a different story. I mean, yeah. I think that we're not finding the healthiest activities for teens to do anymore. No. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to, like, I wanted to tell the story, but I didn't want it to be like, you know, really didactic or like a dare seminar. Like, I don't know if you had to go through those yes, <laughs> in I school did. of just yeah. like, this is bad. This is bad. Like finger wagging. I didn't want to do it like that. I just wanted to be really honest and vulnerable and try to do it with even some humor. And that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Is come up, come up with, uh, a, a way to do that and how do you kind of try to get into a teenage teenager's mind when you write oh um i read a lot of ya so i think that that really helps um to to really stay tuned into what is going on like in the young adult publishing landscape and i also do a lot of school visits and so i get a lot of face time and one-on-one -on -one with teenagers and and you know, at first I was really nervous about my first school visit. And I'm like, ah, oh, like, you know, I had created these mythical teenagers in my head that were like, no, they're, they're going to like eat me alive. And then I came into the classroom and I'm like, oh, you all are like dealing with the exact same problems that I was dealing with when I was in high school 15 years ago. So, um, yeah, I think that young people are just brilliant and they deserve stories that reflect a variety of experiences. And what would you say specifically how you create your characters? I talk to authors all the time. Mm -hmm. You guys create your own world. So yeah. you are mad at yourself at yeah. that time. And yeah. when you're writing, you're writing to for therapy, 
which yeah. is a great thing. Yeah. And then yet you're cre creating through that process, your own reality world of, yeah. of characters and development and how, how do you relate these characters and how do you come up with ideas for each character and how they develop as human beings throughout the book or if it's going to be a series? I get a lot of inspiration from my real life friends and loved ones and family. Um, I think I try to sprinkle a little bit of them into every book that I write, but my day job is also a flight attendant. And so I call myself a professional eavesdropper because I just hear hundreds of conversations every day and people are just fascinating. And I, and I think that I'm just at this point really attuned to listening to people. And so that definitely helps when I'm creating fictional people so what's next for jazz are you are you gonna have this gonna become a series or? oh <laughs> i mean i'd love that but publishing is you know in business and industry and as of right now thirsty is the last book that i have um on contract currently but i hope to keep selling more books um and just telling more stories i see you're saying but you're still writing right you just oh yeah talking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's truly like I'm not even trying to be coy. Like, there's nothing to talk about yet because I haven't uh, sold. Is, is it so? It, it's a challenge, right? Even yeah. once you get published, to get published again. Yes, and that's something that I didn't understand when I was younger and reading. I'm just like, oh, this person's an author; they're set for life. And like, no, it's like a continuous like trying to prove yourself. Like, are your sales good enough to warrant another book? Right, and that kind of and stuff. your fan base and yeah. all these kind of things. And see, yeah. and this is the problem that I guess a lot of uh, authors that are self published don't understand the challenges that publishing companies are having to sell books now that it's not as easy anymore. It's a process and it's the fan base and you got to build your fan base and you got to get your, the people who've read your book to want to read another book yeah. and you have to engage with them. That's why you do the school visits. So mm -hmm. that must be perfect as a flight attendant, right? The visit schools in between yeah. uh, the different things. So you have a good, pretty good yeah. setup that way. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I try to keep them pretty separate. Like I don't really talk about my writing when I'm on the plane. Cause I don't want to be that. Oh no, person. no. I mean like you have those breaks. In yes. Yes. As hit. far as yeah. flexibility and yeah. scheduling, it's like the perfect job. So like for this, I'm going on tour for my book this week. And so I can have a week off and not worry about flying. And yeah, it's pretty great setup. And, and, and you have some of the fringe benefits of going and using and jumping on a flight and going somewhere else. So yeah. if you want to go and say, Hey, I want to do a book signing here. You at least have the trans, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, so there's, there's definitely those things. So listen here, you know, mm -hmm. so where are you going to be uh, doing some of your book signings this week? Yeah, so you're I, going on tour. I am going on tour. I launch uh, the book tomorrow, the 14th in the Bronx. And then I go to Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, St. Louis, Missouri, and Chicago, ending in Chicago next weekend. It's got to be fun to get in front of people that have read some of your books and to, and do these these events, right? It They're is. fun. It is. It's like wild, too, because like when I was signing, um, like I went to a library festival a couple weeks ago and I was signing copies of Thirsty and people were in my line that they were like, I loved your first book. And it was just like different from being a debut when nobody knows like who you are and you're like brand new. So that was really cool to like have people that recognize uh -huh. my name. I'm telling you, if they recognize you and you go on tour, you <laughs> need to go and keep writing. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's my, yes. And, and then take those people that you meet, have them become social media followers of yours and con continually give them content. And you mm -hmm. have something very powerful to go with your literary agent to get another deal. That's Thank my you. take. So, all right. <laughs> Thank best you place. so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> best place people can check you out. Where can they go? The book is available tomorrow, as you said, in all finer bookstores. Yes. But where else? Where else? It is, yeah. yeah, it's available tomorrow. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Jazz Hammonds, as well as my website is jazzhammonds.com. Um, I have the links to purchase uh, both my books on my website, and you can reach out to me on the contact form. All right. Sounds good. Thanks again for stopping by. Appreciate it. All right. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley show and we'll be back in just a moment.